So what a lot of people do not know is that I got my start teaching woodworking and DIY tips and tricks in short form videos. And I guess people enjoyed those because altogether they had over 250 million views. These were educational videos, but occasionally I would throw in something fun like this, the Ecode self-driving screw. So while these videos were fun to make, let's stick with the educational ones. So in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you some of my most viral woodworking tips and tricks. And this one is one of my favorites because it's something that I did not know until later in my woodworking journey. And that has to do with brad nails. So this video received over 18 million views. And trust me, if you do not already know this, you're about to learn something that will save you a ton of time and headache. If you've ever looked closely at brad nails, they actually come to a point. They're angled on each edge, the front and the back, creating a tip in the middle. So why is this important? Because it will actually determine which way that you hold your nail gun. So let's say that we're going to create a butt joint and nail these two boards together. The correct way to install the nail is like this. So by holding your nail gun like that, if the nail actually hits a little knot or a hard spot instead of busting out the side, like we've all dealt with, in most cases, if it is going to deflect, it'll go to the left or the right on the inside of a board, preventing blowout. But if you were to hold your nail gun like this, yes, nothing came out this side, but let's take a look on the inside. So if I just held the nail gun correctly, all of these nails that are sticking out, would have actually been inside of this wood. But still, no matter what orientation that you're holding the gun, always keep your fingers away and expect a nail to blow out because they can actually do some funky stuff. I installed this nail in the correct way and it actually came out and up. So do your fingers a favor and keep them away from the project. And this next one had over 5 million views and it involves one of woodworking's nemesis, crown molding. So there's several different ways that you can cut crown molding. You could use the nesting method, you could use crown stops, or you could even cope it. I think the reason why most people have issues with crown molding is that they use the most popular method, and that is the nesting method, where you just set the crown up against your fence, but it's upside down and backwards. So if you have a dual bevel miter saw, I'm gonna show you how to cut crown molding laying flat. So to cut crown molding laying flat, we are going to put the top of our crown, up against our fence. And then we are going to set our angle to 31.6 degrees. And if you look at your miter plate, it's already marked on there. So 31.6, and then we will set our bevel to 33.9, and that's marked on there as well. And if your saw has these little stop tabs, you guessed it, the bottom tab is already set for 33.9. And since we moved our angle to the left, we're going to set our bevel to the right, 33.9. And so the example that I'm showing you here is for an outside miter. So to cut the matching side to the first one, we're just gonna set the saw up in an exact opposite. 33.9 bevel, 31.6. So by using the settings that the saw already has in place, it makes cutting crown molding a breeze. So I just showed you how to do an outside miter. Let me show you how to do an inside miter using the same settings. It's gonna be just a little bit different. So for the inside miter, we'll bevel our saw to the left to 33.9 degrees, and then angle our saw to the right to 31.6. Now the only other change we're gonna make for this right side of piece is instead of the top being against the fence, we're gonna flip it around to where the bottom is against the fence. And now we have a perfect inside miter. Now there's a very important thing to know about this tip. This only works for the common 38 degree spring angle. And just an FYI, let's say that this board is your wall. Your spring angle is the angle between your wall and your crown. Most common crown molding is 38 degrees. But if you're going to use this technique, the little tag at the store will actually tell you the spring angle of your crown. Make sure it's 38 degrees. If not, you can still cut your crown flat, but you have to change your settings a bit. And you can find some charts online for all the different spring angles and the corresponding settings from your miter saw. So I just showed you how to cut inside and outside beveled miters for crown molding laying flat. Again, this is just one of several different ways that you can accomplish this. But regardless of how you cut your crown molding, I always recommend just keeping some templates around just to set your saw off of. So what I would do in this case, these are scrap pieces. I would just drill a hole through this and just write on the left hand cut the saw settings and then on the right hand cut the saw settings. And this next tip had over 2 million views and it's something that I learned as a beginner. So starting out, I could not afford a joiner and I needed to create glue joints on wood. 
So this is what I did. So let's say that we want to put a glue up edge and join these two pieces of wood. As you can see, can't be done like this. So we're going to start by laying our two boards out flat on the table as close together as we can get them. Then we'll just need a couple of pieces of scrap wood. So make sure the material that you're about to join has enough length to cut the ends off whenever you're done. So we'll just line our scrap wood up with the edge of our two boards, pre-drill and install two screws on each side. Once that's done, we'll just repeat the process for the opposite side. One thing to note whenever you're placing your screws is to leave enough room where the two boards meet for a table saw blade to go through. Now let's see if we can get this joint a little tighter. We'll measure our outside edge to the center of our gap. So in this case it's going to be 5 and 15 sixteenths and we'll just mark that as reference on our board. And then we'll align that mark with the center of our blade. And there you go. A perfect glue joint without a joiner. And this next one's going to be one of those that if you have not heard of this before or seen it done, you're probably going to be kicking yourself in the butt and wish that you knew it a long time ago. So originally I posted this short form a couple of years ago, and that is the easiest way to hang anything that has these pre-molded screw mounts where you have to blindly try to get things square or attempt to measure the exact distance between the two screw holes and hope that you're right. And the easiest way to do this is going to be painter's tape. So I'm going to take my painter's tape and line it up square. And I'm using the tops of these screw holders as my reference. Once you have it in place, just press down. You're actually putting the indentation of where the screws are going to go into the painter's tape. Then I'll actually just take one of the screws that I'll be installing and make a hole right in the center. Peel this off, line this up exactly where you want it. And again, you could use a level for this part as well. And now you know exactly where you need to place your screws. So this next tip received 2.5 million views. And it's a tip on clamping items down to your work surface if you do not have a bench dog system. So in this case, this is not my primary workstation, but sometimes I do my routing here and I wanted a way to hold my items down. So drill a hole into your table and use a squeeze clamp. A bench dog system is a bunch of holes drilled into a table and expensive accessories. So on this table, a long time ago, I drilled a hole that my squeeze clamp bar would fit into. Now that's all you have to do is remove the end of your squeeze clamp, run your bar through the hole, and then attach this back to the bottom. Now with the bottom attached, you now have a workstation clamp. So let's say that I wanted to do some routing on the edges of this or even some special joinery. I could just put it into my clamp, give it a couple of squeezes, you're good to go. And the best thing is, is that whenever you're done, you just detach the bottom, put it right back on, and you've got your clamp back. Let's say that you already have a bench dog table. You can still use this. You do the exact same thing with these holes as we did in our previous example. And that's how you take tools that you already have and make a quick and easy bench dog clamp. And this next one got over 2 million views. It's pretty simple and it's really not even a tip. I just show people how to cut their own dowel plugs. So there's a lot of different reasons why you would need to cut your own plugs. Let's say that you're working with walnut and you want the plug to match or the opposite. You actually want it to offset and you want to make dowels out of cherry. Or let's say that you work with reclaimed wood and you do not want to use new plugs. Or if you're using walnut and you're putting pocket holes into the build. You want your screw covers to be made out of walnut. They make plug cutters in all different sizes. But for this example, I'm going to be using Craig's 3 8 inch pocket hole plug cutter. And I think that I know the reason why this video did so well. And that's because it's kind of satisfying. And if I were setting up to do this, I'd make several plugs of whatever material that I was using. And then take this over to the bandsaw, table saw, or you could even use an oscillating tool here and pop these babies out. But I'll tell you in the long run, a good set of plug cutters will save you a ton of money. Have you looked up walnut plugs lately? So this next one, I recently made a video for my Patreon members on how to cut super acute angles on the miter saw like this. All of the members really seem to enjoy it, so I posted it to other social media platforms, and in a very short time, it's gotten over 2 million views. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is a two-part acute angle jig. So basically, 
you can cut 50, 60, 70 degree angles with this. So you have to picture this all together without the 45s cut out of the center, but it's just a piece of scrap two by six. And then for the backing, it's just a scrap piece of plywood that is high enough so I can clamp it to my fence. So all you're gonna do is glue and screw your backing to your two by six. And then you will just set it against your fence, make a 45 degree cut to your left, and then a 45 degree cut to your right, leaving you these two pieces. And what I like to do is actually leave these two spring clamps with this. That way I don't have to go looking for clamps every time I need to make an acute cut. Since both sides of this jig is cut at 45s and set against our fence, whenever we use this, this becomes our new fence. Let me show you what I mean. Anytime you place a piece of wood against your jig, zero will make a 45 degree cut because this is our new fence. So if I were to make this cut, we end up with a 45 degree angle. Well, our saws can already cut 45, so really what's the use of that? Let's say we wanted to make an angle like this. Since the zero now represents 45 degrees, every degree up that you go, you're adding to 45. So let's say that we wanted to make a 55 degree cut. We're just gonna to go to the 10, because 45 plus 10 is 55. So as you can see with this 55 degree cut, we're actually using the second board here as a stop block. This keeps the material from sliding into the throat. So anytime you change the degree, make sure you change the backstop to minimize your gap here. You really only want it wide enough for the blade to go through. So using that same math, again, zero is 45. So we're at 55 here. Let's say that we want to cut a 67. So now we're at 60, 65, and 67. There's our 67 degrees. So with just the help of a scrap wood jig, you're now able to make these angled cuts that a lot of people are like, how in the world do they cut that angle? Well, if you're one of those, now you know. And speaking of the Patreon community, if you're interested in finding out what it's all about, I'll throw a link in the description. We'd love to have you. And those are just a few of hundreds of tips and tricks that I have posted. But I want to know what is your favorite DIY hack? Not something that I just put in this video, but your personal favorite. Drop it down into the comments, share it with everyone. Drop it down into the comments and share it with everyone because there may be someone in our community that needs that tip. And if anyone is interested in these self-driving lags, give me a call, I'll hook you up.